over 19 years, your eyes and ears on horse racing has been Tommy Wolski's The Sport of King. On today's show, we'll go to school. My race of the week is the CTHS Sales Stake. Tommy recaps some of the major stakes in racing across the nation. We'll hit the archives in case you missed it. Tommy gets you caught up on the buzz. I salute the champions, remembering one of racing's equine heroes. And out here he is, BC's ambassador to the world of horse racing, Mr. Tommy Walski. Recently on the Sport of Kings, we did a feature on Red Hot Apprentice jockey Ryan Pacheco. Now, during that interview, Ryan had talked about how he got started by attending the Chris McCarran North American Riding Academy. After we aired it, we had numerous requests to learn more about the Chris McCarran North American Riding Academy. Chris McCarran achieved greatness as a jockey. Now, this Hall of Famer has started a school for jockeys, hoping that he can give riders on this continent that same edge other jockeys have had in other countries around the world. We've got the best racing in the world. From January 1st to December 31st, every year, bar none, the United States has the finest racing. We put on the best show, virtually every other country that has a racing industry, has a school through which these license applicants must go before they can even apply for a jockey's license. It's crazy to think that we've never had a place to formally train kids how to ride. McCarran learned to ride on the job. School wasn't an option. I remember when I was starting out, I was scared to death working around horses. It took me a good nine months, I think, to get comfortable working around the horses. At the North American Racing Academy, the days start at 7 in the morning. Students must tend to their horses. At 7.30, it's off to the classroom. So the topic for today, we're going to talk about how do we uh, evaluate brood mares or potential brood mares, like maybe maiden mares coming off of the track. When do we start the breeding season? So when does the breeding sheds open around here? Then it's a grueling equisizer session where McCarran puts them through practice races. The equisizer class is very important because even though it may look easy, it's very strenuous. Don't fall, don't fall, don't touch. Don't touch it with your hands. It's just a great tool. Harder. We can show them how to develop technique on the mechanical horse almost as well as on a real horse. All right, Ryan, your horse is lazy. Uh, Students follow this up with an hour in the barn before going to the track. I think one of the most important aspects of the way we develop this program, whereby we have the students rubbing or grooming two horses each as well as getting on them every day, what I'm hoping that we're able to develop with students by the time they leave this program is they'll have a great appreciation for all the hard work that the grooms put in and the exercise riders put in and getting their horses, you know, to the gate for them. Yeah, I wonder what Jerry Bailey and Gary Stevens are doing right now. The Academy allows a rider the time to gain confidence in a safe environment. There's always doubt because, you know, you start losing some confidence and then you start gaining it back. It's a process. <laughs> And that process of learning starts with McCarran constantly in the ear of each aspiring rider. I equip them all with radios and they've got earbuds in there so that I can communicate with them while they're out there riding. The rest of the instruction. You can build your confidence a lot easier. First year student Christina McManigal in a short time has already learned how to handle the bad acting horse in the barn, Billy. He would get me off so many times. I mean, <laughs> he's crazy. Oh, oh, oh. Good job, Christina. Way to hang on. Okay, Christina, now it's going to be very important for you to show him who's boss now that he's gotten you off, okay? I want you to get after him hard. Go. When he, when he goes up in the air, when he goes backwards, Christina, get off his mouth. Don't pull on his mouth. Good job, girl. Now let him go. Let him go. Good. You just got to show him who's boss, you know? Good job. Okay, slow down a little bit, Christina. You're back at it, girl. Look. They've got a mile track, a five furlong track, and a big 20-acre field that we gallop in as well. The Kentucky Community and Technical College System is the main force behind the school. They've provided us with, uh, with all the funding, all the resources necessary to, to build an academic program and to get this thing off the ground. Calling future horsemen, McCarran sees the school expanding beyond just teaching jockeys. The main reason I decided to call it a racing academy and not riding academy is because 
We plan to expand this program to include courses for horsemanship, not just riding. We want this academy to become a source of labor for the industry because I think it's necessary. Join the exciting world of thoroughbred horse racing. Buy a BC Brad Future Champion at the CTHS Yearling and Mix Sale Tuesday, September 14th at Thunderbird Show Park in Langley. Preview Parade on September 13th. Visit www.cthsbc.org today. Picture yourself in the winner's circle. racing with the buzz. This coming Monday at Aces Race Course, we're all in for a treat when we're attending the races. It is Labor Day. Two major stakes and also prior to the Richmond Derby. Popular 2008 BC Horse of the Year and also Derby winner from that season, from that year rather. Butch Garson's crazy coffee is going to be retired with a special presentation. Now as far as why crazy coffee retired, his trainer Cindy Krasner told us he had developed a problem and has only decided now would be the right time for Crazy Coffee to call it a career. Now as far as that second career, he's now going to become a dressage horse under the care of Leslie Reed. Last week there were three major stakes run here at Hastings Racecourse and we're going to count down all three of them. First up was the $50,000 New Westminster Stakes. This is for two-year-old Colts. And coming from off the pace, the winner was Lara's Racing Stables Promising. Tia Peku, ridden by Red Hot Amadeo Perez. And Juan, thank you for that name. <laughs> on the outside, Mr. Collaborator, it's Chalaki Packy going right on by. Chalaki Packy to score in the New Westminster. Look out, Dubai will be second. Mr. Collaborator, third. Next up, we're going to show the two year old Phillies who are in action in the $50,000 Lassie Stakes. Now, in this race, it was all over value, who easily went to the front. She never looked back. She was trained by Tracy McCarthy and ridden by veteran rider Dave Wilson. That is overvalued. It's overvalued, striding away by three by four by five. Overvalued to score in the Lassie. It will be victory with class second. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, third. Next up, the three-year-old Phillies got a chance to perform in the $50,000 CTHS sales stakes. And this is won by J.D. Spencer's Wanda Woman. Wanda Woman came from off the pace. She bested sweet and sour. Wanda Woman was trained by Sydney Krasser and was ridden by Frank Wentz. Here's Wanda Woman. She's widest of all. Wanda Woman, sweet and sour, victorious by. Wanda Woman, sweet and sour. Wanda Woman to score. Sweet and sour second, victorious by third. Last Saturday, Jeff Jackson's popular race mirror, Rachel Alexander, finished second in the $300,000 personal and science stakes. He was run at Saratoga Racetrack in New York. After the race, Jackson stated, we are disappointed in the results, as we are sure her countless fans are, but we are certainly not disappointed in her. She is still a superstar in our hearts and minds. And that's it for this week's Buzz. Don't go away. The Sport of Kings will be right back. Racing across the nation, where we follow all the top stakes races throughout North America. Racing across the nation is brought to you in memory of Jeff Robinson, owner and breeder in Aaron Acre. Today on our Racing Across the Nation segment, you are all in for a treat. As thanks to the folks at Del Mar Racecourse, we're going to show you a musical tribute to the legendary Zenyatta. I got the magic in me. Every time I touch that track, it turns into gold. Everybody knows I've got the magic in me. When I hit the floor, the girls come snapping at me. Now everybody wants a blast of magic, magic, magic. Magic, 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 magic. magic. 
they're up. I got a feeling. You better take a look at Zen Yada. That tonight's gonna be a good night. Future superstar Zen Yada. He just covers so much ground with those bounding strides. Zen Yada on the extreme outside. A flawless performance winning the Apple Blossom. Zen Yada reaches. Tough to assist. Zen Yada. Two words for real. How do you describe perfection? Why try? Let's just watch a run. This is Zenyatta. Poetry in motion is Kokchi Cantor's home. 141 and 2, equaling the mile and the 16th track record here on the poly track. Here comes Zenyatta yet again. Is Prix is just striding away effortlessly. Zenyatta on the outside now strikes the front. Zenyatta's going to come home to score. Zenyatta is kicked into gear. She's decided to go four wide, and here comes Zenyatta. Zenyatta levels out and runs away. Zenyatta! Here she comes, right on by! Here's the real Zen master! When she jumped into that big, long, beautiful stride, it was, it was over. Zenyatta! So close, I think Zenyatta got up and over it. Mike Smith takes dead aim on the leaders and asks Zenyatta to go, and just look at her go! Zenyatta with is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Zenyatta. Zenyatta has a lot, a lot of ground to make up. Zenyatta, if she wins this, she'll be a super horse. She's starting to pick them off, though. Zenyatta going to hook to the outside. Meanwhile, it's Colonel John. Summer Bird in the red cap. Look out, Zenyatta's back to the outside. Zenyatta coming, flying on the red fair side. Gio Conti on the inside. Summer Bird is right there. This is Her legend, 17 in a row! Hey, racing fans, are you looking to buy a future champion at the CTHS auction? Look no further than Foundation Stables Chestnut Philly, represented by Red Rock Farms in the auction. Hip 51 is the first full from Foundation Stables' multiple stakes winner, Slewpass. Slewpass won $280,000 for her owners and was bred to graded stakes winner Finality. Check her out in the parade on Monday, September 13th, and you'll want to have her running in your silks next year. Now here's the part of the show we simply call In Case You Miss It. It's a chance for you to look back at the magic and the mystery of horse racing here in British Columbia from the Sport of Kings perspective. In Case You Missed It. Coming up in September is the annual yearling in Nick Seal. And to help you understand how much time and effort goes into preparing young horses for these sales, we talked to Roxanne Sargent, a top sales agent, and she's here to explain process of getting a yearling to the sale. Roxanne, it's so important to get a horse ready for a sale. And yours, that's one of your responsibilities. How do you do it and what is it all about? Uh, well, I think it's mainly about getting the horse to the sale in the best possible form that you can. It's making the horse as close to an athlete as it will be. Um, so I think when buyers come and look at the horse, they don't have to make a leap as to looking at the horse and trying to think, well, what is this horse going to look like as a